Superman and Lois, Season 3, Episode 13. What kills you only makes you stronger. It's now summer, and over a month has passed since the previous episode. Lex Luthor has been operating under the radar, and no one has seen him. Jordan is still resentful about not being allowed to use his powers. Jonathan is still volunteering with the fire department, and has volunteered to set up chairs for the town's viewing of an upcoming meteor shower. Chrissy is pregnant. Kyle proposes in front of the whole town, including Lana. Chrissy accepts, and Lana handles it fairly well. Fortunately, she and John Henry have just taken their relationship to the next level, although John Henry has to decide whether or not he's going to stay in Smallville, or if he's going to take the DOD up on their offer and move to Metropolis. Lois is finally ready to resume marital relations with Clark, and the two of them make use of Tal's villa in Italy. Upon returning to Smallville, Clark and Lois ask the boys if they would like to take a family vacation to Italy. They will discuss it at dinner at the diner that evening. Clark overhears that the judge who presided over Lex Luthor's case and sent him to prison, who had also been on Mannheim's payroll, has been murdered. Lois tells Clark that she believes Luthor is trying to send her a message. Jonathan, Jordan, and Natalie are sitting in the chairs set up for the upcoming meteor shower. Their grandfather, General Lane, introduces them to his new girlfriend, who is weirdly over-affectionate and creepy. After the awkward meeting, she lures the general into an alley under the guise of trying to make out. She stuns him, and we see Bizarro didn't eat Luther's second-in-command, since he's one of the guys now loading an unconscious General Lane into the back of a van. Apparently, Bizarro only ripped off this guy's ear, and Lex killed Bizarro. But Bizarro wouldn't stay dead, so Lex killed him a few more times, and Lex realized that every time he killed Bizarro, Bizarro mutated and grew stronger. So for the last month or so, Luther has been repeatedly killing Bizarro in a montage that seemed like it was from a different show. Lois and Clark have dinner with Jordan and Jonathan at the diner. Clark tells Jordan that if they pack light, he and Clark will fly Lois and Jonathan over to Italy. Jordan doesn't understand the difference between using his powers for things like flying to Italy and his helping people and posing for pictures. Clark explains to Jordan that it's not about using his talents, it's about why he's using them. Having people know who he is and taking his picture won't fix what Jordan thinks it will. If helping people and making a difference is Jordan's true north, he'll never need the other stuff. That's when waitress Sarah walked up to their table. Jordan was rude to her. Lois and Jonathan leave, and Clark talks to Jonathan about how he just treated Sarah. Clark tells Jordan that he knows what it's like to have his heart broken, but that's no excuse for being mean. Jordan admits that he just wanted Sarah to feel as bad as he does, and that being around her makes him feel terrible. Clark points out that they broke up months ago, asks if Jordan really still feels that way. Jordan admits maybe not as much. Clark gives Jordan cash and tells him to go make things right with Sarah. Jordan takes the cash to the register and tells Sarah that he was making up reasons to be mad at her, but the real reason was that they weren't together anymore, and he apologizes. Sarah thanks him, tells him that she appreciates the apology, but it's obvious that they shouldn't be friends right now. Jordan agrees, and they shake hands and part ways. It's now dark, and the meteor shower is about to begin, when Natalie tells Lois and Clark that the general is 20 minutes late in meeting her, and he isn't answering his phone. Clark finds the general's phone in the alley. They realize that Luther has taken him. Superman is trying to locate the general and realizes Luther is at the Kent farm. This is when Luther summons Bizarro with the Superman summoning device that he took from General Lane. Now we see what Luther has done to Bizarro, and it appears he has turned him into Doomsday. Superman fights Doomsday. He has what appears to be a Man of Steel Jonathan Kent tornado scene with Jordan, Doomsday beats the crap out of Clark and flies off with him. They fight on the moon. The end. The torture scene and fight scene felt like a music video or some made-for-YouTube video where someone took scenes they think are cool and paired it with music that they thought was cool. That was my assessment of that. No, No knocking those videos, but that's a different animal from watching a television show. And it just felt really out of place with the music from 1992 and 1996, which was supporting the montage. Just really out of place. The episode felt like it was all cobbled together 
There were some good scenes, like Clark talking to Jordan in the diner, but all the scenes involving Lex Luthor felt really out of place, like they were reshoots and just kind of shoehorned in with other stuff that had been cut up. It's like they couldn't wait until next season to do the rebooting, which just seemed very strange to me. It felt forced at the end. It didn't feel like the Superman and Lois that I had been enjoying for almost three seasons. In my opinion, Sons of Anarchy Lex Luthor kind of feels like a way of distancing the show from the class struggles that they'd been trying to use as a running theme, even with the Mannheim storyline. Lex is no longer the psychopathic businessman in a suit that costs more than my car. He's now a working class looking guy who enjoys killing Bizarro with a chainsaw. I like the small town premise. I think it tried to be a somewhat honest take on the struggles of small town America, but this season it really felt like they were trying to get away from that with the beginning with the kids going to the rich kids party, but then, you know, they had Mannheim's background. But they never actually showed that to us. It was just exposition. Now they've taken Lex Luthor and turned him into what looks like a working class white guy. They've made him the villain. Someone had commented in our comments section under one of our videos that the villains in seasons one through three had all been variations of the Lex Luthor wealthy businessman. I completely agree with that. And now they've taken this Lex Luthor. What we're getting is Sons of Anarchy Lex Luthor. He's the opposite of the suit-wearing businessman. It really feels like they were trying to subvert our expectations with that, especially since that whole businessman thing is completely up in the air since he hasn't even shown up at Lex Corp yet. So it just kind of feels like they were trying to make him into a working class villain. That really just didn't sit right with me. I think you're onto something when you say this was cobbled together, and we have a clue for this. At the beginning of this episode, in the credits that were being displayed over the introduction of the episode, Chad Coleman was listed. But unless I missed it, I didn't see Chad Coleman anywhere in this episode. No, I, I don't I don't recall seeing him. He wasn't in it. What I think happened is I think this Lex Luthor stuff wasn't meant to be introduced to the very end of this season, and only just him getting out of prison. The fight scene between Doomsday and Superman lasted about 10 minutes, and it was really, really, really well done. I would argue it was a better CGI fight scene than was in 2016's Batman v Superman. So I have a feeling they started working on that fight scene earlier this season. And when it was up in the air, if this was going to get renewed, they scrambled together to try to get that scene to somehow make sense before the season ran out. So I think this Lex Luthor stuff was jammed in there. Last week, I was speculating it was to make the CW new owners, was a new star? Next star. Next star, happy. I think it's not that. I think because they didn't know they were getting renewed, what they did is... They had a bunch of stuff in the works that they filmed and that they had uh, CGI together. And they wanted to get that on the screen. So in the last two episodes, they jammed that crap in there. Because in this episode, there were parts of it that felt like it was part connected to the old previous two seasons. Well, seasons and two seasons and a half, because most of season three felt like it was connected. And I think there were scenes like that diner scene. We criticized the writing last week when Clark was giving some really horrible advice to his son or not giving the proper advice to his son. My way or the highway, son. This week, he was behaving. That diner scene where he was talking to Jordan. Jordan was trying to twist this into, we can fly off to Italy for a vacation. He wasn't even seeing that as Clark giving way, saying, look, let's try using your abilities again and seeing if you can emotionally handle doing it. That was actually a concession by Clark to see if Jordan could handle the responsibility. And Jordan tried to turn it around and say, yeah, but saving people, that's not good, right? And Clark replied back and said, yeah, saving people's fine, but then you chose to get your picture taken. And then his brother Jonathan said something like, dad one, Jordan zero or something, because everybody at the table knew that what Jordan was pushing was bullcrap. 
And I think that went along with when he was talking to Sarah, when Jordan eventually talked to Sarah, because the reason he talked to Sarah and apologized to her was at that table, Clark politely told Jordan, look, you got to get this in order with Sarah. I mean, he didn't quite say this, but Clark was saying, your first step in getting your privileges back is to make this situation right because you've been acting like a big baby. Jordan did do that. When we were watching this, I was praising Clark. Hey, Clark's finally behaving like himself. And Molly was happy. She's like, yeah, but Jordan's behaving like himself too. So I think this was cobbled together. I think that diner scene when the family was talking, that was fantastic writing in that scene there. I thought that was really, really well done. And from a pro wrestling fighting point of view that, if you've watched my reviews, you know when I watch superhero stuff, I like seeing that because that's what I want to see in superhero stuff, if nothing else. This was really well done. It's too bad it didn't fit in with this season or this episode. I think this was meant for next season and they didn't know if they were going to get a next season when they finally finished up the latter half of this season. If you Go online on YouTube. I've seen YouTube videos of the fight. There's like two segments to the fight. It's really well done. If you get into that sort of pro wrestling fighting, I think it's the best fighting that this series has done. In fact, I would argue from a CGI superhero point of view, I think this is the best ever done on television. But that's my personal take. But where this feels like it's going, I agree completely with you, Molly. The the music they were playing when Lex was killing and reviving, well, he was killing, and then Bizarro was reviving himself. That didn't fit at all with what was going on here. The music, the tone, any of that, and poor storytelling. Because I could not figure out what Lex Luthor was doing. After the episode, Molly and I had to do some research. I'm not a comic book person, so somebody in the comments correct me if I get this wrong. But from what I was reading, Doomsday was created long before Kryptonians were a thing. And the scientist, there was an alien scientist that made Doomsday. And the way he created Doomsday is he did keep killing and then reviving him because he was, I guess, speeding along evolution so that this creature, when it was all said and done, after all, who knows how many iterations of death, that it would have the ability to I guess, be evolved to the point where it could tackle anything in the universe. That's why Lex Luthor was doing that to Bizarro. Now, the Bizarro turning into Doomsday, that's not anywhere in the comics at all that I found. That's just some weird take that this series took. I might be okay with that if they would have done it better and they would have prolonged this. Again, we're mainstreamers when it comes to comic book stuff here, so we only know the mainstream stuff. But Molly mentioned to me that what she was hoping at the end of last week's episode with Bizarro eating that rat and then going all caveman, Molly mentioned in the 90s, there was in the animated series of Superman, there was a storyline where Bizarro thought he was Superman and then had to come to terms where he wasn't Superman, where he had to be educated on what he actually was, and they concentrated on his dealing with that realization. And that was actually a pretty good story in the animated series. So Molly was telling me she was hoping this episode was going to be about Zombie Bizarro being told and realizing that he was nothing more than a zombie of a reanimated person he used to be. Yeah, because obviously in that particular storyline, that version of Bizarro had been created. I believe Lex Luthor did it using a strand of Superman's hair. You had a lot of empathy for Bizarro. That would have been a very interesting storyline, but instead they went for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre version of Lex Luthor that doesn't really resemble the Small Town America show that I started watching back in the very first episode of season one. Unfortunately, at this point in time, I'm just going to have to say I'm not going to be watching season four because I don't like the direction that the show is going. Agreed. I'm, I'm also done with this. As far as I'm concerned... Like we said last week, episode 11 of season three, two episodes ago, that's the last episode we would recommend anybody watch of this series. These last two were some sort of weird demo reel, or I don't know what you would call these things. It was it was the reboot that they're going to be engaging in for season four, and I want nothing to do with it. This is going to be 
a CW show, and I mean that with all the smearing of what people think about CW shows. We, for two seasons and 11 episodes, protected this series and said, this is beyond CW show. This is a actually good show. And we stand by that. I still stand by the first two seasons and most of season three. That is not what I consider to be a CW crap show. However, these last two episodes, this is as bad as Gotham Knights. This is as bad as Batwoman. This is just horrible. That end of it. When you factor out that diner scene with the family. And then they tried to introduce a bunch of other storylines that we know they're not going to finish up on because the cast isn't coming back. Lana and John Henry were starting to couple together, even though he's going off to Metropolis. They're not going to do anything with that. That's done. Apparently, Chrissy's pregnant with Kyle's baby now. Well, even though Kyle might be back, because I think he's supposed to come back as a reoccurring character, I don't believe Chrissy's coming back. So what are they going to do with that? So I think what they did is they cobbled together these last two episodes because they had some stuff shot, hoping they were going to get a season four, but it didn't look good when new ownership came in. And I think they just jammed it together. And having Chad Coleman's name in the credit at the beginning of this episode, to me, was a dead giveaway that they didn't even keep track of what credits they were putting on what episode. And I hate the way General Lane's story is ending. Because the actor's not coming back. He turned down the recurring role status. They had him behaving uncharacteristically in this episode. He had no incredulity when it came to that woman he was dating as far as her weird, over-affectionate behavior, especially in front of his grandchildren. And then he goes and gets stunned and he's tossed in a van and that's the last we're going to see of him. That's it. That's how General Lane's story ends. That felt like that could have fit into a Batwoman episode. It was horrible. It was, yeah, it was horrible. It was horrible to watch. Now, what I'm going to mention here, since we're done with this series, I'm going to mention for me a couple of the regrets that I wish the series would have done but didn't do. At the very beginning, when Jordan was getting his abilities, so Clark was bonding with his one son, Jordan, and Jonathan was kind of left there out on his own. And then in this season, they kind of had Kyle be some sort of surrogate parent for him, which to me was bizarre. I don't understand. In season one, there was a small window when John Henry first appeared where Jonathan was working with his mom, Lois Lane, and investigating what was going on. What I was hoping was going to happen, and I don't know what happened in the comics. I don't care at this point. I'm talking just this TV series. I thought that Jordan was going to be working with his dad to learn how to harness his abilities. But I thought Jonathan was going to work with his mom to become either a reporter or a detective or something. So that Lois Lane would have something to do. And Jonathan, I don't know how Jonathan, if I was in Jonathan's position through this entire series, having to take the back seat to his brother. And they played the character. He was a good sport about the whole thing. But if that was me, I would have had a real problem with that. Because what about me? I'm your other son. Granted, at the beginning of the series, the whole point was Jonathan was the big football star in Metropolis. Jordan was just this emotionally challenged person. And the role swapped for a little bit. But then they never did anything to give Jonathan a purpose. They just It was all about Jordan. And I just wish Jonathan... I wish he would have learned more how to be an investigative something. He wouldn't have to be a reporter. He could turn that into being a detective or something. But that would have given Jonathan some purpose. I really wish they would have went that route. And I also wish that they would have spent a lot more time dealing with the problems of small town America. Because the way it's ending up right now, I could see season four going to Metropolis. Because Smallville has become so boring right now that why would they set this in Smallville again? They lost track of what they were dealing with. Going back to what Molly was saying about what Sons of Anarchy Luther is now, well, wouldn't it have been an opportunity earlier this season when Jonathan's girlfriend's dad was struggling, I guess, to deal with being a parent in that town with maybe no job opportunities? Wouldn't that have been a better way to go to show somebody who was working class instead of what they did with Lex Luthor. In fact, I would argue, I wish they would have had the scene where Superman, 
Well, I guess at that point, Clark, because Superman didn't do this to him. But when Clark embarrassed him in that restaurant, I really wish Clark would have followed up with him at some point to say, look, it's not okay for you to be bullying people and bullying your kid, but I'm Superman. I'm trying to help you. I help everybody. What's going on, dude? Instead, Clark intimidated him and scared the crap out of him, and he just drove away, and that was the end of it. At, in that episode, we didn't care for that. And in retrospect, I don't care for that. Well, there was never any resolution with that. No. Like, her dad disappeared, and that's the end of that. In fact, then they got rid of her as well. She went off to live with her aunt. <laughs> she came back, I think, for one episode. Maybe it was two. That was it. It was just... So much of the season just felt like dropped threads. For instance, why did Pia kill the previous mayor? What had he done that he got in against Mannheim and deserved to be killed like that? Well, plus he had all those diverted funds. They were supposed to be a mystery. They were going to yeah. unearth. They never did anything with that that I remember. No, and maybe those were some of those pieces that got cut out in favor of shoehorning in the Lex Luthor stuff. Because we never saw what happened with the mold in the high school. We just saw them, you know, at the end of school in this last episode, cleaning out their lockers. So apparently they resolved the mold situation and they were back in the school. Again, so much of this stuff just felt like they brought things up and then just forgot about them. But again, it comes back to, well, is that really the case? Or were these things sacrificed so that they could bring in this crap that is showing us the... Reboot Bridge to Season 4. This Lex Luthor stuff should have been an entire season building up. The Doomsday Fight, again, I think it was really well done. I think if you watch it in isolation on YouTube, it's like, yeah, thumbs up. But story-wise, there was no payoff. It was just kind of thrown in there at the end like, oh man, before we end this episode, let's stick in this really cool fight that we have. Yeah, but leading up to it, does it make sense? Oh, that doesn't matter. We're just going to stick that in there. Because that should have been the finale of Season 4. After an entire buildup in Season 4 of this, that should have been the big payoff. And then maybe I would have gotten more into that fight, because like I said, I thought it was pretty well done. The way it is now, outside of just watching the YouTube video of watching it again, story-wise, I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and the actor they got to play Lex Luthor... He was miscast for this. I'm sorry. He was, from my point of view, this was just not going to work for me. Whatever character he's playing doesn't work for me. I'm not even sure what his take is. He was somebody who was imprisoned for false reasons that Lois Lane helped with, with her story. I would have liked to have seen a season, Lois dealing with the fact, much like in season two, her sister was suggesting that Lois got the story wrong with that cult leader, Space Carrot. And it turns out Lois actually got it correct, if I'm remembering that. So it would have been an interesting take to kind of balance that if next season Lois was having to deal with, wow, I got the facts wrong and somebody had to pay the price for what I did. But again, you'd want to stretch that out over many episodes, not just kind of jam that. I, mean, I can't even say an episode. They didn't even really deal with that. This episode was a poorly done episode. Last week was a poorly done episode. There are pieces of both episodes that I liked in isolation, but as episodes, they were bad. I don't know a nice way to put it. I think this episode, Molly, would you agree this was better than last week? Oh, definitely, because last week, by the time the opening credits rolled, the good stuff was over. And at least with this episode, there was good stuff sprinkled throughout the episode. So that in and of itself makes it better. However, most of the storylines in this episode, they felt rushed and odd. For instance, again, General Lane and his new girlfriend, Chrissy just seemed to be pregnant out of nowhere. And now yeah. she and Kyle are getting married. Like, wow, that was fast. So there were a lot of things that just didn't feel right in this episode. And it's just a shame because I wish they would have taken the time and used all 13 episodes that they had to actually do the Mannheim storyline right and to tie up all the loose ends associated with that. Like I said after the previous episode, I wish that this whole season ended with Lex Luthor walking out of prison so that you knew who the baddie was going to be next season and you knew something bad was coming. But instead, they shoehorned in the Lex Luthor stuff. Now this season ends with Doomsday 
taking off with Superman. Well, I mean, the ending was they were fighting. The very ending was Superman, as he was being dragged up into space, he was thinking about his family again. And that's like the third time they've used that tropey thing where he thinks about his family. And then it reminds me again of going back to pro wrestling, like when Hulk Hogan would get beat up and then he'd start shaking real bad. And then he'd like go all Hulk Hogan-y and like, you know, start throwing people around. That's what this reminded me of. So anyway, the sun was hitting him as Doomsday was lifting him away from Earth. And then as the sun was hitting him, Superman, he was thinking about his family and Lois and all that. And then somehow that revived him. And then he punched Doomsday into the moon. And Doomsday landed on the moon. And then Superman was on one side of the screen rushing toward Doomsday. On the other side, Doomsday was rushing toward Superman. They were going to clash in the middle of the screen. And then the closing credits kick on. And that's, that is the cliffhanger for this season. I agree with you. I think that what they were going to do, I think, is exactly what you suspected. I think at the end of the season, they were going to have Lex Luthor just coming out of prison. And all of season four was going to be a slow burn about Lex trying to get payback for what happened to him. Because they didn't know if they were getting a season four, they jammed the material they started shooting for season four into the end of season three. I don't know how you deal with this, because going back to the comics, so if this doomsday ends up killing Superman, even if it's temporary, who's going to carry the load acting-wise? They got rid of most of these characters. I would argue they're going to have the kids, and they're going to have a bunch of school kiddies along with them, and this is going to turn into Gotham Knights. That's my guess if Superman ends up dying, even if temporary, and if he doesn't die... You've got Superman and Doomsday fighting it out on the moon at the end of this episode. (laughs) How do you top that? How do you top that? That is like the pinnacle of two titans fighting. How do you top that in season four? What's the purpose of watching season four? Superman punches Doomsday into the moon. How are you going to top that for season four? I am going to double down on what I said earlier and last week. I still recommend this series. Somebody asked in our comments, well, because of the character assassination you see happening, should I stop watching? And I'm going to say no. I think season one and two has enough good in it that you should continue watching. Season three, although not nearly as much good as season one and two, I still think up till episode and including 11, you should continue watching. 12 and 13... I wouldn't watch. I'd go to YouTube and look up the Doomsday Superman fight because I think it's cool enough to see and then just call it done. Like that's some fan film at the end or something and just call it done because we are not planning on reviewing season four at all. We said when we started reviewing this series this season that we went out of our way to try to explain to our viewers. I, I know the CW shows aren't very good. They have a cheap quality to them, and they don't seem to understand basics of cause and effect, characterizations, and so forth, meant for children, meant for teenagers. And we kept telling you that this is different, and we both stand by that. But we think season four is going to be exactly what we said this wasn't. I think this is going to be for children, teenagers, in season four. This is going to be, hey, we don't have Flash anymore, we don't have Supergirl anymore, we don't have whatever else... Batwoman anymore. Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. (laughs) So we're going to add all this teenager crap into season four. Because we already heard their budget's going to be slashed. So they spent a good chunk of change on that Doomsday Superman fight. As I said, I think it was better than Batman v Superman's fight, like by a bunch. So they spent a ton of money on that fight. They said there's going to be budget cuts next season. So what are we going to get next season if they don't have the money to do something like this? I am disappointed with the way this ended because so much bad television is out there. This was a nice oasis from this. Those of you that are still continuing with the series, keep watching. I I really do think it's worth finishing up to season three, episode 11. I think there's still good in there. But this series, it's done. Maybe a bunch of teenagers will start watching it for season four. But I thought this new ownership was trying to change around the reputation of the CW. And this is not a really good start, what they're doing here. No. They fight on the moon. 
I guess stuff like that happened in the animated series, but it just, like you said, there was no build up to this. It's like Doomsday came out of nowhere. They just started fighting. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> this is not the same show. So this will be our last review on Superman and Lois. If, you're interested in season four, you'll be doing it alone because we will not be giving any sort of reviews for season four. Yeah. Anybody else watch this last episode? What were your thoughts on this? Obviously, you know ours. Like, subscribe, comment below, and we'll be continuing on with Star Trek Strange New Worlds after this. Take care.